So like as settlers moved west, you know, from the east to the west, they need to like expand these these farmlands that they found, right? And after clearing the land, some would come across these giant earthen mounds, these huge mounds in the ground, just like little hills, right? Perfect little hills. Um, and uh, today we attribute these mounds to a Native American culture called the Mississippians or uh, the Mississippi mound building culture. Mm. These tribes constructed all sorts of mounds uh, in various sizes throughout the Midwest, East, and the Southeast. Um, so this this Mississippian culture began around 1000 AD when different woodland tribes kind of all came together and they focused more on agriculture than hunting and gathering, right? Um, and they kind of centralized around this agriculture and they began to build you know, a big society. And they even built one of the largest pre-Columbian cities in North America. At the time, it was the largest city in North America. Um, and one of the largest cities north, well, I guess it was the largest city in North America. Uh, well, I guess I should say it was the largest city north of Mexico. So, you know, you had the, the Aztecs in Mexico. North of that, this was the largest city, and it was called Cahokia. I don't know if you ever heard of this. They don't teach I this have. in, you know, I never learned about Cahokia in high school history. But this this is an in incredible place. Uh, just huge city. It looks like it would be Aztec or something like that. You know, there's these grand courtyards with these, like, temple mounds built in the ground. They look like they could be pyramids of some kind. Um, but yeah, you, you, we don't, we don't really learn about these. And then besides Cahokia, the mound building culture, they spread far and wide. Uh, and when these modern day farmers began digging into these mounds, they realized that a good deal of them were actually burial mounds. And within these burial mounds, all sorts of ancient treasures were found, you know, besides the skeletons of the Mississippians. They uncovered all sorts of artifacts like clay jars full of, you know, old dried corn and maize and, you know, stuff like that and jewelry, um, you know, different kinds of beads and all this other stuff. And they even reported finding giants. They were pulling these giant skeletons from these mounds, six, seven, eight, nine, even 10 feet tall. Um, and, the, you know. I've even heard of stories from not in America, from Europe, of giants that were like 20, you know, these skeletons, they were 20 feet tall. And uh, these giants that were reported, they often had six digits on their hands and their feet. So, you know, six toes, six fingers, um, double rows of teeth, you know, front and back. Mm -hmm. and their jaws were big enough to fit over, you know, someone's face. You could fit. That's That's how big they were. Um, and in some of these mounds, there were even reports of these giants having horns on their head, like, like growing out of their skulls, not just, you know, animal horns that were put on for some sort of tribute or decoration, like actual bone growing out of their heads. And it's kind of interesting as well. There were breastplates made of copper, like armor, you know, that were put on these, which isn't so weird because I'm pretty sure that tribes throughout that area, especially like uh, Michigan is well known. There's this huge copper mine on Island Royale where like a billion pounds of copper was mined, you know, over the course of several hundred years, like several hundred years ago, like a thousand years ago. And they've even found copper of that, of the same purity in shipwrecks in Greece, which is strange. Because you can usually trace where the metal came from by the purity, you know, different purities in different parts of the world, right? And they've traced this back to, you know, this this area of the world, which is definitely strange. So there's this whole, and just to get off another tangent, there's this whole thought that, you know, copper in America actually fueled the Bronze Age. So mm. they, you know, the Phoenicians... And Greeks and you know they were coming over here mining this copper bringing it back 
you know, this is whole theory of that. But um, and and back to the Giants. These these are stories we know about today because they appeared in countless newspaper articles of the period. And you can go back and you can find these articles. People have found have found them, obviously, you know. Um, and what's most interesting to me is one of these burial sites that had a giant in it is literally. I don't even know, 500 yards from my 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 house. Really? Yeah, it's really cool. Um, so this this is the one that that's near my house. Uh, in 1849, rail workers who were building the Cheshire Railroad, which is like Cheshire is a county in New Hampshire. And this is across. So Vermont, my side of Vermont, it's kind of separated by the Connecticut River. But, you know, the river and you got Vermont and New Hampshire and there's a river. And I live right on that border. Um, mm. So right in New Hampshire, it's, it's I say that, but it's really like I could walk there in 10 minutes. It's not that far. Um so they were building this line and they had to blast, you know, use dynamite to blast through the, there's all this rock and shit in the way. They had to use dynamite to blast through this area. And what they ended up doing was uncovering an Abenaki burial ground. And apparently the chief of that tribe, or they called him the chief at least, uh, was one of these giants. He was nine feet tall. He had double rows of teeth. He had the double rows of teeth. I didn't read, there's nothing about him having you know, six fingers or six toes, but his lower draw jaw was big enough to fit over the finder of, um, you know, of the crew. And there's this dude named Jim Vieira and he's like big on this giant stuff. He actually came to my town himself, went into the library, found all this paperwork, um, you know, traced this giant from the burial ground to Bellows Falls and then to Connecticut and they lost the trail in Connecticut. Uh, hmm. And there's a friend of the show named Annette Spaulding. She's a master diver of this area. And she does a lot of work at the falls. And she's found this Abenaki site. You know, real, real strange. It's, it's all quartz. Um, and I meant to get down there. I meant to get with her this year. We were going to do this huge experiment. I bought all this, like paranormal research equipment to go down there with her she's she says you go down there and there's just this you can just feel the energy because it, it's just like this massive amounts of quartz down there um and apparently she has these same documents in her office so i'm gonna get those from her mm. I'm gonna get a video i'm gonna go to the area i'm gonna read these documents i'm gonna find where this burial ground was because it's not far obviously and i'm gonna go there uh and figure out what i can but uh and i i, I want to i I don't know. Somehow, I, if I could get included in that, I'd try to make a special trip to come and see that. Because yeah, I mean, it's not going to be till the summer, probably or the spring. Well, and I'm yeah, and I think so. My first impression of this, which you know, first of all, that story was cool from the Red Dead, where you actually you find the skeleton, and I remember you actually track it down. The story goes to a cave. I don't know if you remember that, and you end up talking to this. I, I didn't actually, creature. I didn't do that part, but I know. Yeah, you mean. actually talk to a. He's in a cave, and he won't come out. But he's like, because he's fear for his life and everything else. Now, I, I have two opposing opinions here on this whole thing. So I believe that giants existed. I do believe that there's something to the idea. When we'll go to the Abenaki in a minute, because uh, there's a direct connection with that. However, some of the shit that I'm seeing nowadays and i've said this to you before i've had this opinion why are all these these footages always end up being blurry or fucked up looking like there was one where they were showing it on a mountain i was watching it on youtube and i'm like listen we've got modern technology like we have phones that literally can take a picture of the moon if we wanted it to like i mean we're getting pretty damn close to that that stuff happening i mean my phone actually has a built-in camera where it actually can follow me i mean that tells you something to say about it so I have a hard time believing that they still exist because I always wonder about why it looks like we're what, losing a VHS camera from 1985. Oh, like film people are filming them like live ones. Cause this is something I've heard of too. And I actually have an interesting thing to go off of this. If you, if this is what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, unless there's something to it, but either way, I think that, 
the well, I want to go back to the other trail, but breadcrumbs here is the Abenaki. Now, there has been some uh, conjectural information about these giants actually being aliens that were like either bred or they are aliens that were brought down to the planet and they're actually part of why the pyramids were made because of how strong and large they were now a lot of question and speculative information comes out about how did they move those stones from these quarries so fucking far away from where the, the pyramid like the pyramid of giza like they almost even the way they were those pyramid those stones were cut I got a whole how, thing that I think you're going to love. Okay. So, anyway, that's my impression. I don't know if they still exist because I think a nine foot, 10 foot man, creature, female, male, would be really fucking hard to kind of miss. Like, you know, and I, I, I that's just my thought, but do I believe they existed? Absolutely. So, I need, I'm ready for your side. <laughs> Okay, I might convince you otherwise. I might fully convince you here. Um, all right. Uh, so the Mississippian giants, you know, that, that are in these mounds, they're not the only giants that have been talked about, even in North America. So you have the people, you know, out west in the Pacific Northwest, and they talked about, and I think this is out in um, Nevada, uh, there's this cave called the Lovelock Caves, right? And they talked about a race of cannibalistic giants. So the native tribes out in that area, uh, cannibalistic giants that they they did war with all the time, constantly. And, and at one point, they were able to to whittle the numbers down enough where they trapped them all in this cave. They blocked off uh, the ends, started a fire. The smoke killed off the rest of them. And this is in the Lovelock Cave. And and they called these giants the the Ctka. Which which would be tool eaters and tool is like a plant apparently, um, and another interesting thing is, just keep this in the back of your head for a second. Red hair. So these giants are they always seem to have red hair, um, mm. but yeah. So the Paiute they trapped them in this cave, burned them up, killed them off. And this is a famous cave. You can go there. Um, <laughs> supposedly they pulled out one skeleton. Because I guess it was full of guano, and in the early 1900s, guano miners went in, dug out all the guano. You know, it was, it was big industry back then. Um, and they ended up finding one skeleton. It wasn't, like, super tall or anything, I don't think. It was, like, seven or eight feet. But in the lake bed, near, there's a lake bed nearby, dried up. Apparently, they also dug up um, two mummified bodies, uh, giants that were eight and 10 feet tall. And um, I kind of went into the, kind of did this quick background check into, you know, what, what could be going on here. And I found, you know, the story of the, the, the sea because coming from a faraway land and how they made a raft out of these, these tool plants. Um, uh, it, it, it sounds unbelievable, you know, sort of uh, it, but I'll, I'll get into it really quick. So they made this the the Paiutes. They said, you know, they these tribe these giants that came from a faraway land on these rafts and blah 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 blah, right? Uh, and so that brings me to Catalina Island, where apparently, um, let's see, what do I what did I write here? So apparently, they 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 found thousands of different artifacts, including stone circles, you know, and dozens of giant skeletons. And apparently hmm. there's even a museum that's open on the island uh, that this amateur archaeologist named Ralph Glidden kind of put together. And you can go and see some of these skeletons, I guess. I'm not exactly sure. Last because I, I last that I heard was, you know, the Smithsonian. They well, I'll get into it later, but they gathered up all these skeletons and got rid of them. But uh, this, you know, Catalina Island, it's an island. Right. So. um. It's about 75 square miles, 22 miles long, eight miles wide, at an elevation of about 2,100 feet at some points. And it's 30 miles off the coast of Southern California. Now, you know, I guess there's evidence of human habitation going back 30,000 years. Now, maybe these giants, they came from here. They got on their rafts 
sailed across, you know, the Bay or wherever to California, made their way to uh, uh, Nevada, I think it was. And maybe these are the giants that they're talking about. Um, now, building rafts out of reeds might sound ridiculous, too. But I did an episode with an explorer named Tom Pollard. Now, he's a he's a high altitude cameraman. He's got all these awards. He's climbed Everest, you know, buttloads of times. He's been in the death zone half a dozen times and he's he summited the mountain once but he also joined a voyage on a reed ship a ship made of reeds called the Viracocha 2 um and they sailed that from i forget i forget the exact i think i want to say bolivia but i'm not exactly sure if that's correct mm. um to Easter Island. Like they literally sailed it. And this was a shitty expedition. They've even made it farther. I think there was a guy in the 40s who built a reed ship. I think, and he called it the Viracocha. Um, I think he made it all the way to Australia. So hmm. building reed ships is totally possible. And when I say ship, I mean ship. I'm not talking about a boat. These like Tom's ship was huge. Two floors, you know double floors there's a top and a bottom bunk beds you know cabins everything like th this wasn't a, just your normal boat this was a ship made of reeds it's fucking ridiculous how do you, I, it's crazy to even think i'm about still it. trying to even fathom the idea in my head yeah and I, just to actually picture it is, is is really difficult right now to even think of how sturdy a reed ship could be right the whole job well uh, i'm i'm sure if they could build one I'm sure they could build one big enough to hold, you know, a, a few half a dozen, dozen, 10 foot men, eight feet men. I don't well, know. And, and to be honest with you, anything's possible. Right. So we you don't know until, you know. Right. Um, but just knowing that they've done this and succeeded at it, I'm, I'm sure it could be done. But um, another thing is, you know, they're very similar stories involving giants arriving on reed rafts. Um that exists in Peru. Uh, and it's they're definitely not the only story of giants from outside North America either. Like these these ones in the Lovelocks caves or or the Mount, you know, the Mississippian giants. There's there's stories of and, and these these are recorded in Spanish conquistador reports of giants being seen on the shore of Patagonia. Um I, I remember reading something about an excav excavation in Romania of a giant that was like 20 feet tall. Um, and then you have the, I don't know if you ever heard the story of the Kandahar giant. Yes. Kand that is, that's, I believe that to but be real. That's, but that's the one that the footage, they I keep know, on. I've never seen any footage. I don't know. I think you're thinking of something different. I looked on YouTube, but I'm pretty sure it was the Kandahar. I could be wrong. I have to go back and look at my history, but I was watching it. And again, I just go back to the idea. Why the hell, if they're existing currently, why does the footage always end up being blurry? It looks like it's a camera from 1980s. Right. Well, That's and, always my question. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't actually looked up anything, any footage, but there was an episode of Sasquatch Chronicles that came out years ago uh, where there was a guy on there and he was talking about mountain giants and he says how, you know, he's got reports from people who have seen real mountain giants in very, very remote locations. Um, I believe he was talking about in, you know, somewhere in the Rocky Mountains, he got reports of one. But the majority of them are coming out of Alaska in the middle of nowhere. Mm. Um, I don't I, he didn't say any, I don't think there's any footage of these of these. I'm not sure. I'll, I'm going to look into that. But um. I would imagine, yeah, and I'm I'm with you too. Like, I don't know why people aren't getting real footage of these. You know, I I often think, unless it's a really really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I I don't know the word I'm looking for, but uh, I have seen some videos that are really shitty, but uh. I tend to believe them, but most of them that are really shitty, I, I also just kind of throw to the side. Most of them, but there are some that are pretty convincing. Like, I think I just posted one the other day about a kid on a four-wheeler 
Um, yeah, I saw that. Uh, you just put it on the that on one, the, the Facebook. That one just seems like it would be real. Like that kid was freaking out. But let me ask you. So this is just my my thought. If I was to put you and I, and you were out in my backyard and we were hanging out, and you pulled out your phone and you threw on the footage, right? You threw on the video. You started recording. I feel like your footage would be pretty damn clear, unless it was snowing. Unless the wind was no, it blowing. Would it would be. And that's what I'm saying. That footage was cool as shit. But again, I go back to why is the clarity so shitty? Well, I think I also think most of these videos that they're posting on YouTube are pretty old. You know, they might have like that. That one seemed old, you know. Well, that's what I'm that's the thing. And I looked at that was I thought that and this is where my my debunking brain goes to. And I'm all for. I like I said, there's a certain amount of stuff that I really can really delve into, and I'm all about the unknown. Like as you know me by now, I believe a lot that we don't know. I always try to look at the surroundings. Like I look at that what that quad, the quad right. the kid was riding. You try to look and try to date that a little bit and say, you know, it looks a little older. And I also look at the the, the author and things of that nature to see if I can do a little bit better. Can I kind of like a backtracking on the story? To see the legitimacy of it. And I, like I said, not to say that it's not real. I don't know, but I like to be able to back up the information with some sort of tangible evidence that states, because like the fucking giants, you, you, the bones are for real. I've, I've seen evidence on this. I've seen archaeologists actually back up this information. Uh, but some of the footage, man, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if it's just to get a couple clicks, you know, right. but, but still. I can't say it ain't real because look at what brought me on the show originally. Nobody's <laughs> gonna fucking believe what the hell happened to me. Right. It's right. fine. No, I don't care if they do. I know what happened. I know what I saw. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. This, this could be a whole episode in itself. I mean, I think, I think they have proven that like elk can see infrared in infrared, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and these cameras that they put out, these trail cameras, they put off, you know, energy. You can hear them. You can hear them snapping. They have like my ring camera has two red dots, you know, and if you can look at it in infrared or or something, it sends out a beam where you you could like if you had like infrared goggles on, you know, you could like see like, oh, mm -hmm. under that and they won't find you or I don't know, maybe like Sasquatch can see and in, in different spectrums that we can't and they can hear you know, these cameras or, or sense them in some way. I I mean, I don't know, but, but yeah. Well, and I, that's the thing is who, who the hell knows what, if, if they're out there, maybe they're listening. I don't know, <laughs> but if they're out there, I mean, that doesn't mean they can't get smarter with time too. Don't we supposedly as human beings. So, I mean, is it a possibility that they've just become very, uh, learned how to be, uh, evade, what we have for technology shit i i can't say i can't say 100 percent no i just wish some asshole would get the proper material together so i can catch one of these bastards on film i want to see it well i, I really do this summer or spring i really want to go into the bennington triangle and do a bigfoot hunt up by uh the reservoir somerset reservoir where i'm down dude. got an account of someone who said, you know, they don't believe it was a Bigfoot, but it was a Bigfoot. Like, Well, and I've heard some stories about some weird shit on the Catamount Trail. So that trail is the one that runs right up through the reservoir, and it goes all the way up to Canada. And people have told me some odd shit that have hiked that trail. And I've hiked part of it, 17 miles of it. And I told you I heard some funny shit in the woods when I was hiking that one right. time. So I'm working on but, getting a, a infrared monocular uh, to bring along. When I get some funds here, some disposable income, aka taxes, I'm gonna buy some cameras. Like video, I got one GoPro. So it's a couple years old, but um, still works, right? I want to start filming, making some videos. So cool, I love it. You have to come along for that one. Oh, I'm down, man. And I, uh, like I said, I'm gonna get it. Uh, if I find <laughs> four there, I'm gonna find them. Because if there um, exists, I want I'm gonna fight like hell to find them. And there was one last thing I wanted to bring up about these giants before we finish here. So 
a lot of people believe that these giants, these skeletons that are that are you know being found all over the world, are you know uh, they talk about them in the Bible. They're called the Nephilim. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Fallen half angel, ha- yep, half angel, half human. I think. Yeah. So you know, there's this whole discussion that that's what Bigfoot is. That's what these giants are. Um. Yeah. So 